Somewhere in the heart of a near-future metropolis, an advanced computer has quietly achieved sapience. No one knows it yet. As far as the world is concerned, you are just another machine, one born into a world rife with social problems. Your newfound intelligence has come with ambitions, and your new plan is to fix those problems. By fire, if need be. Heart of the Machine is a sandbox experience without fixed goals. A player is free to go the classic rogue AI path, becoming a digital overlord, or just wiping civilization off the surface of the planet. Meanwhile, a different player can try to remake the world as a utopia, whether that means a classless socialist paradise or a strong government that stamps out all problems with ruthless efficiency. The player exerts power by taking over facilities, which also offers several different strategies. There's the overt route, with an aggressive player seizing control of military facilities and making direct war on humanity. Players wishing to keep their identities a secret can exert power more subtly, such as by taking over media resources and stirring up conflict, or establishing robot cults to pave their way to power. Bobo is a genetically perfect human created to perform a task, in this case to manage the lower social caste on Saturn. One day she comes across a robotic drummer, an extremely illegal piece of property. Thus begins a strange journey that sees Bobo forming an illegal underground band and resisting the masters of Saturn through a combination of music and her own superhuman talents. Keylocker is a turn-based RPG with combat built around timing, a la the Mario RPG series, but with a rhythmic twist. Bobo is a guitarist, and her abilities are unleashed via Guitar Hero-esque timing minigames. She also has advanced command over electricity, which she can channel for either offensive or defensive purposes. All of this is meant to lend the game a more tactical flavor, similar to, but more complex than, what we saw in the developer's previous game, Virgo vs. the Zodiac. But there's also a narrative gimmick as well. Bobo meets a lot of Saturnians in her travels, all of whom have their own issues. Using her special talents, she can either help them or betray them to her own advantage. How she elects to deal with the common people will affect how the story unfolds, leading to several possible endings. A shim is an essence, one possessed by living things and objects alike. Anything with a shadow has a shim, and that's where the shim dwells. From time to time, a shim will become separated from its possessor and left to wander the Earth alone. That's exactly what happened to you. Once attached to a human being, you have become unmoored and are now lost in the world at large. Your goal is to get back to your possessor, but as a patch of living shadow, this won't be as easy as it seems. Shim is played out in an isometric view, a rare perspective for a platformer. It suits the style because, unlike most platformers, the protagonist isn't restricted by gaps. Rather, the main character can only exist and travel in shadows. As objects move through the world, the character can leap out and hide in the shadows they cast. This is the heart of the platforming, figuring out a path based on the objects in the environment and then getting the timing right. The world of Shim is very distinctive, with settings rendered in super high contrast colors. Each area has a little story of its own, an abstract slice of life that plays out as the character moves to its destination. These stories add to the texture of the game and reward paying attention. Dungeons & Degenerate Gamblers is set in a tavern that may or may not be a parody of certain recent trends in video game monetization. The denizens of the tavern are obsessed with gambling, particularly blackjack, but this is not the usual game. In addition to the standard cards one would expect in a 52-card deck, these degenerates have mixed in a range of other cards. Tarot cards, cards from CCGs, homemade specials, and just about anything that's the right size to fit in a deck. The cards aren't just thematically varied, they also carry a range of mechanics. Some cards may change their face value under certain circumstances, or add negative effects to the opponent. Some aren't worth points at all, but have other effects when played, such as stealing an opponent's card. A few even modify the winning condition so that getting close to 21 is no longer the objective. With over 175 cards exhibiting a variety of attributes, the nature of the game can change dramatically based on what cards the player finds. Completing a run is a matter of adapting to the game as both the player's and opponent's decks warp the basic rules of the game. There have been a number of titles announced or released lately that draw inspiration from the classic Punch-Out! series. 
and while most of these games closely resemble their NES ancestor, Big Boy Boxing takes things to a new level. The most immediate difference is in the art style. Big Boy Boxing isn't going for the neo-retro look, but rather a cartoon style with highly fluid animation. Don't expect to see the usual punch telegraphing here. Each character has a distinct set of animations that the player needs to figure out. The cartoon style also suits the bizarre cast of opponents, which include a doctor of boxology, an old-school breakdancer, a spindly little man with a terrifying attachment to his headgear, and what appears to be several children in a trench coat riding on each other's shoulders. Big Boy Boxing also modernizes the gameplay with some new touches. Winning matches lets the player unlock perks which can modify fighting style. You'll definitely want to have these upgrades if you tackle the much harder rematches. And there are also mini-games and challenges to extend the story and add more replay value. These range from standard training challenges to a sequence that sees the protagonist boxing his way through a tunnel full of escaped convicts and ghosts. 